What's going on everybody? Today I'm gonna to walk you through the process of making a number 68 Western vertical wallet. It's gonna be really similar to the number 52 video that I did, but the Western vertical has a little twist. Also, we're doing things just a little bit differently now. I used to have all the, all the wallets laser cut for our main production. We're back to using a clicker press. Now we're painting edges using this Bernice edge paint. It's just beautiful. As most of you know, our main production happens at our manufacturing partner over in Connecticut, but I'm still doing a lot of design work here and little one-off projects. Today I gotta hurry and whip out a Western vertical because we oversold by one and uh, it might be a couple weeks before we get the next batch of Western verticals in. So I told the customer that I would rush it through uh, personally, decided to make a video while I'm doing it. So let's get it done. The very first step is always to take your hide, roll it out, you know, find the spot that you want to cut it. Here's the buck brown. That's a pretty important step to show, except for this project, I've got some scraps here that I'm going to be using to cut out uh, this wallet. Since I'm just doing one wallet, I can uh, squeeze it out with some of these scraps here. So I'm gonna find some nice sections of the leather that aren't too marked up or damaged. I wanna find the really clean spots uh, to make my cuts. Then I'm gonna take my dies here. Um, I'll put the link to uh, where I buy these dies from. But uh, I designed the shapes on Illustrator and I have these custom made for me. I use these on my Mighty Wonder clicker press right here. And I'm gonna punch out all my shapes needed for this one wallet. But first we gotta sneak up on our crew. They're out here swimming. Boo! <laughs> what are you guys doing? You stop having fun, you hear me? <laughs> Hi, buddy. He was looking tough in his pink chair. He had that on and he was sitting in the pink chair. <laughs> hey, everyone back to work. No, just me? You back to work. All right, see ya. I need one of these. This is the main body panel. Good stuff. And there we have it. I need two of these. <whistles> Couple of our little t-shirt shapes. Bam! Banga, banga, banga. And the western trim, it's the best part. Banga. This is the bottom part of the western trim right here. Piece that holds it all together. That's not true. Banger! Do you guys going in for naps? Yep. You guys gonna behave? Are you gonna behave? Yeah. <laughs> Have a good nap. Love you. Bye. These little pocket pieces right here are gonna go down first, and I'm gonna make a stitch right here. That keeps the card from going down too far. That way I can put this pocket panel right there and each card will sit right where it needs to. But before I stitch this on right here, I'm going to skive the bottom edge of this pocket right here, about a half inch in, which basically means I'm gonna make the leather thinner right there. The reason for that is once I'm sewing around the outside of my wallet right here, if there's too much bulk on the bottom of my pocket right here, then the presser foot for my sewing machine will dig in and kind of dig a deep trench right there. Um, because it's basically pushing up against the edge of that. So I'm going to skive it down, get rid of the bolt, and then we'll move to the next step. This is my Conso S4 Bell Skiver right here. I love this thing. It's one of the best investments I've made. Bell blade right there spins, and you can set the, the depth that you want with that little piece right there. And I'm just going to take my pocket all the way in, and look at that. Didn't turn out very pretty. I was doing it one-handed. Probably should have uh, focused a little more, but. So basically you get to thin out the leather right where you need it to. So you can accomplish that same thing by using a hand skiver. Um, something like this, you can get from Tandy. These are really cheap, but it's a little more time consuming. It's a little harder to use too. Um, the console is a really good investment if you are uh, making bags and you want to get all the way around the shapes. Um, and you're sewing a lot of different pieces. That thing's a lifesaver. So I'm going to take my pockets now lay them down on those inner panels right where they need to go. I'm gonna make a mark, then I'm gonna lay a bead of glue, then I'll put them together and make my stitch right here. I gotta do that on both sides. I gotta get the bison in there. I'm gonna put him right there in the corner. I've got a template for this, but I'm just eyeballing it. And chum. He's in. I'm gonna use my scratch all to just make a little mark where I want the pocket to sit. So I'll put my bottom pocket down first, 
line it up perfectly, get the interior pocket, lay that on top, and then I'm just gonna pull out my bottom one, and I'm gonna make my mark right there. That's, where, that's how I know where to put the glue. I'm gonna do it for both sides. Lay it down, yank it, scratch it, glue it. So I'm using my little uh, squeeze bottles here for my rubber cement. You guys know I love these things. I'll put the link down in uh, the description. This is the rubber cement I use, it's barge. It's just like the classic shoemaker, super hardcore glue. I know everybody hates it because it's so toxic, but I kind of like the smell. I actually bought some other stuff that I'm gonna try out. I just haven't even had a chance yet. So uh, if I die tomorrow, then I guess it'll be too late. I'm gonna take my squeeze bottle, lay just a, a thin bead of glue right there. You really don't wanna use too much of this stuff because it'll just, it'll just like ooze over the sides. You only need a little bit to get it tacky. The glue's dry. I'm gonna go ahead and stick them together now. And you gotta make sure that the, the edges and everything is lined up perfectly. So I'm even gonna take my bottom panel and line it up because you don't wanna have any gaps in, in the, uh, the lines between the two pockets right there. Okay, I used a little too much glue um, after I just warned you not to, but I just put some new glue in that bottle and it's, it's a brand new jug and so it was really, really runny. Place that one down, got them down. All right, let's go make our stitches on the bottom. Done. I'm gonna hurry and do a quick edge treatment on the interior of these pockets because once we sew on this front panel, it, you won't be able to burnish that anymore. Um, since we're actually edge painting these days, um, I'm just going to do a really light burnish with water on this just to get it to smooth down the fibers and then I'm going to do it just a light coat of that edge paint right there. For this leather, which is Wicked and Craig's uh, Buck Brown Harness Leather, I'm going to be using this French Vernice Edge Paint in dark brown. This stuff is beautiful. My favorite tool for painting edges is this edge roller right here. As long as you clean it off right after you're done, then uh, it's easy to just keep going back and forth and using it. I've tried a lot of different tools. Uh, this thing's always the most consistent. Just puts a really nice even bead of paint right on your edge. I love it. Link in the description. So I tested using edge paint quite a bit before I actually committed to it. And I realized the thing that I was not liking about it was how rough it looked after um, it looked really bumpy and scraggly and it's because I wasn't laying the fibers down. So you think you're replacing the job of burnishing, you're really not. You still need to do uh, uh, kind of a wet burnish just, just with water just to slick the edges down and then this paint will seal it up really nice. Just looks real clean. Got the bottom trim all painted up. I'm gonna make some little tick marks right here so that I know where to stop my glue. And then I'm gonna fold the pockets back like this so that just get them out of the way so the glue won't touch. And then I'm gonna run a little bead of glue from one end of those tick marks all the way around to the other side. And then you gotta get a little bit of glue on these tabs right here. And of course rubber cement becomes tacky and then sticks to itself, so you gotta put it on both sides glued. So I'm gonna center it, I'm just gonna eyeball it like this. Here's the bottom piece, and let's get some glue down. This is a job where a brush would probably be better again, but I got this sitting here, so it'll do. But you do want to spread it out. Gonna wipe some of it out. We're dry, I'm sticking it down. I've got my edge guide set to about one eighth of an inch and I'm going to run it down the side just so that I know one, right where my stitch is going to go and two, it lets the stitch lay down into the leather, lets it be flush with the leather. This is a good little tool to have. 
lay one down right here on the side. And there we have it. No right where I'm gonna put my stitch. I'm gonna lightly sand and wet burnish and then uh, paint the edge on the inside of these two panels right here. Then I can lay them down on the, on the main wallet panel, stitch it all the way around, and we're pretty much there. I'm sanding the edge down just a little bit because if there's any unevenness, then the paint's gonna look really bad. It will burnish a lot nicer if you got a flat, clean edge. back we had to step out of the house last night and we didn't get back till much later and I uh, didn't get to finish this wall up but I'm gonna finish it now there are only a couple steps left so let's get this thing finished I'm gonna flip this side upside down I'm gonna make some marks where the glue needs to go for these panels right here looks like we're lined up real nice all we need to do now is run our stitch all the way around the perimeter and then finish the edges. Let's get over to the Juki. I'm gonna get as much of that ad adhesive off as I can. So we don't want that messing with our edges. Using just water, I've got the edges nice and slicked down. Um, so the fibers are laying down. We're gonna get a really smooth surface to paint on. So let's let that dry and then I'm gonna come back at it with some Carnauba cream and that'll be the final step. This is Phoebe's Carnauba cream. It's basically like the wax that you would use to, to uh, polish your car. Um, so you just want to put a light coat of it on top of the leather, let it sit for a little bit, and then and then uh, buff it off after. So it's going to lose its shine here for just a little bit. And then once you buff it off, it just looks beautiful. You typically only use this Carnauba cream for uh, really shiny leather, the glossy leather. Just like this harness leather from Wicked and Craig, this stuff is, has a jack glaze on it, which makes it really glossy and shiny. So, All right. Just got a nice even coat there. You can see it kind of lost its shine. It's a little bit matted, but we'll come back and buff it off. I'm gonna take a clean part of the rag now. Just start buffing, just like you're doing your car. This is some of the most sensitive leather that I've ever uh, dealt with. It's 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 tough in in the sense that it'll last years and years of life in in tough conditions, but it's sensitive in the sense that it takes on scratches and uh, little marks and, and marks from our sewing machine and things like that more than any other leather we've ever dealt with. I think this leather is just insanely beautiful, uh, which is why we've used it for all these years. And there we go. Clean, beautiful, buck brown harness leather, number 68 Western Vertical. And that's it, we're good to go. The Western Verticals take a little bit more time to uh, kind of take their shape once you fold them in. It will break in though and just sit really nicely right where it needs to be. And there we have it, a classic timeless piece of leather work that the customer will get to keep in his back pocket for years and years and years to come. Um, that's half the fun to see it age and uh, see it take on different colors and marks. That's the beauty of Vegetan leather. Just as an example, this is my personal 
Um, number 68, Western Vertical. Same exact wallet, same leather. Just about a year and a half of age on it, so it's taken on a little bit of a darker color, um, especially around the edges and over here. Takes on a little bit of the indigo hues from my denim. This uh, Western trim just adds a little bit more structure to that spine so it doesn't get all flimsy right there, down to just the one layer. And also it just adds a really nice little Thank you guys so much for watching. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate all the love and support that we've been getting from YouTube. Um, you guys are amazing. We love having you a part of our community, part of the family. Go smash that like button for us and um, hit subscribe if you haven't yet. We're gonna be doing these every week and potentially more. I wanna start doing more videos every week. So, so I hope you guys have a good one. Go pick up some tools and start learning something. Become expert at it. Do everything you can to be the best in your field, and you could potentially make a living out of it. All right, that's it, I gotta go, bye.